we have our American bros, which would be the equivalent of the, the English lads. Throughout my research of the English lad, <laughs> I found that there is one word that can describe all of them, and you will be quite surprised at what I'm about to say. That word is... mom and today we've got a super super special guest we have got my stepdaughter Jenny hi, hi Jenny. Jenny hi everybody hi everyone thank you for having me today <laughs> welcome to Brick Girls Go Stateside <laughs> I brought something really special so I think you will be quite impressed oh, what oh, is do it show, do show Ta -da! Oh, yay! Love a good cup of tea. <laughs> the first time I went to England on the train to Paris, they weren't serving coffee, it was only tea. After that, I drank it a few times, but now I found this one, which is so good. And now I'm just like a regular Earl Grey drinker. So I will be so fashionable and fit right in when I go to England next time. Yeah, like a native. Yeah. I have a fun getting to know Jenny question. Jenny, can you describe yourself in three words? And then, can you describe British people in three words? <laughs> if it's possible to sum us up in three words. <laughs> of course. For myself, I actually watched some videos before getting ready for this uh, interview. There are a lot of people on YouTube that will uh, give you some British adjectives and what they mean. I found um, some of my old favorites, which I can use to describe myself. The first one I love is quirky. Oh, I love oh, quirky yeah, too. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I would describe myself as quirky. <laughs> Oh yes, I'd describe you as quirky too. I've heard myself being called this from Julie, mostly, which is cheeky. Too oh, cheeky. Oh, you are very cheeky this day. Very yes. cheeky. Far too cheeky sometimes. <laughs> And then my third one, it's just, um, it's not something that would always describe me, but it describes me over the last three years, which is around the time I became a mother, which is knackered. <laughs> I think mums everywhere would probably agree with that. Yes. To describe English people in just three words. Three, if you can. You guys seemed a little bit more family oriented and than, than we, tend to be here, and I wouldn't say this for everybody, but just generally in America, we don't see our families as often as you would in when I was in England and you guys were always so close to one another and you talk to your, your cousins and your second cousins. I don't even know who my second cousins are. And like, you know, you knew everybody. I just kind of felt that way over in Europe in general. And I loved that when I was there. It just, I, I immediately felt welcome too as being a part of the, our, my new family and everything. And I got to meet everybody. And I just, I love that about you guys. Yeah. It's good to hear. Well, that's a nice one. Yes. That was yeah. nice. Because I was wondering. I was wondering what we were going to get. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice start. <laughs> the next one could be both good and bad, but it's only bad because of how we are, at least in larger cities in America, like where I'm from in Chicago, there was something that was a little, I, okay, if I say shocking, that might sound like a bit of an exaggeration, surprising to me. You guys have a really good sense of humor, but you're also very like, how, how to put this, not afraid to not be so PC all the time. <laughs> yeah, brutal. But it's in a it's good brutal. Way, not me. You're just like having a, like a good, healthy argument or like getting <laughs> someone the Mickey, is that what you call it? Yeah, take oh, the Mickey. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There's things that I would say to British, my British friends, that I would never say out here because I feel like people wouldn't care. No, I think you take it literally, whereas we have it as a bit of banter. You know, you can be quite, quite cut cutting and cruel sometimes, yeah. but in the best way. <laughs> I feel like if people aren't being mean to you, they don't really like you. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like when you're comfortable with someone, you'll take the Mickey a lot more. Mm than someone who's being really polite to you. I'm always worried that people who are polite to me don't really like me that much. <laughs> <laughs> it was just different. I, I, like I said, I wouldn't say uh, it, it's 
bad at all. It was just like, it, it caught my ear. Like when I would hear certain things because yeah. we, especially in Chicago um, and the neighborhoods that I lived in and things like that, like you were just kind of like walking on eggshells a lot, you know, it's like, you have to be like a little careful because people can get um, rather offended here. Uh, we're, we're just pretty PC people. <laughs> so when you go traveling, it sometimes can be a little different. We'll put it that way. <laughs> this is a good one. She's saying the best to love. Yeah. No, this is a great one. Um, I, I just love how friendly that you guys are. And I wouldn't say that I noticed it right off the bat just being in London because it's a really busy city like any other. You you don't make a lot of time to, to talk to people or else it'd be like, what? go away I'm trying to get my coffee and just move on about my day I was trying to figure out like the the bus basically I was um in London and I think I was scrambling for some change and trying to figure out how to get my ticket there was a, a, a guy behind me um who was like oh I get on with it then <laughs> and I was like <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I think there was a line of like 10 people behind me. I'm sorry you had that experience. <laughs> well, that was a really rare because especially but what I'm about to say was um, once I went to Norwich and all of the smaller towns, everybody was so friendly. Everybody wanted to talk. I would go into a store and this could have something to do with the accent. But just in general, I really felt that people were very welcoming and friendly there. Yeah. There is one more thing. <laughs> Yes. Just one. I, I I wouldn't forgive myself, and I almost forgot this. You're a little too indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> As a whole. That is um, so true. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. with directions. Directions. Do you remember? Well, just oh. with anything. Yeah. When we were trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B, and we would look at the maps that they had in the city, or Dad's giant map of Paris, which was funny. You guys weren't sure not only was the fastest route, but maybe like the safest and the best route, the most scenic route, the, all the different route options. And I was just thinking, I can't imagine these two at a Starbucks. Let's go back to your first bit, visit to uh, the UK, Jenny. And you, your dad and your cousin Ryan came over. Lucy and I met you in London and then we traveled to Paris. And as we recall, you were so excited about going to Paris. No mention of London. Yeah, well. Oh. <laughs> and it was all about Paris. There's a group of Americans, I think, that um, we just tend to believe everything is better in France. Uh, maybe even Europe in general. I think there's quite a few of us that, that think that way. That was such an amazing trip. I loved Paris so much. I don't think that it ruined London for me necessarily like I was I was just completely fascinated by Paris and then when we went to England I mean it was completely different so it was really nice getting to see just two completely different cultures both places I've been wanting to go to for so long I, I remember when my dad and I were talking about this trip I was just in disbelief that I was actually going to go to England and France like I was I mean it was just such an amazing experience all around. You went to Paris, you w went around London, and then we took you into deepest Norfolk. <laughs> and a little bit different. <laughs> you visited um, my parents in North Norfolk, and we went around the coastal, windy coastal roads, and you went to Norwich, mm. where we, uh, well, Lucy was brought up. What were your impressions of that? Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Correct answer. <laughs> oh, of course. It would be awkward otherwise. <laughs> My cousin Ryan was actually traveling with us too, and I know that he felt the same. It was just like, if you could like think about a painting of England like that's what those areas would be I mean it was just so beautiful I loved the buildings and the fact that you guys have ivy everywhere and cobblestone it's just exactly how you picture it it was so quaint quaint, <laughs> quaint. oh yeah Jenny's bringing out some good words today good words. yes it's just the Earl Grey it's just <laughs> glowing I recall that we went to the local village pub. You do the impression of Jenny. Oh, just a glass of champagne, please. <laughs> I'm so impressed to hear that I sounded like that when ordering. It wasn't just like, well, howdy, a glass of champagne, please. Oh, <laughs> I'm a glass of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so perhaps this is one thing that France might have over England is that if we were in Paris, it would have been totally acceptable. Then I wouldn't have stood out. They'd be like, oh, it's another champagne drinker. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on tap. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, I remember um, feeling like I stood out a bit after after that. I will say that the beers in England, the ones that I've had, um, and it's probably because I just didn't know what I was ordering, but some of them are just really like a hearty. Yeah, yeah they're like a meal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it was in Norwich where we all had beer before yeah. our meal, and I was like, I don't think I can eat. I was just oh, impressed that you tried it because I know there's a kind of negative stereotype of British beer out here. Like people are like, oh, warm beer, gross. Yeah, but we do but great. But you tried beer, it, man. and good yeah, for you. Yeah. Anyhow, what did you think of the pubs then, Jenny? I loved the pubs. It felt so cozy inside. The Rose and Crown in particular, like you guys had the fireplace. We always seem to be around there at Christmas too, which just made it even better. There is nothing loved... like a warm pub on a cold winter's day. Yeah. It's with the fire going. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the best. a great atmosphere. Yeah, you can't beat it. Um, okay, Jenny, when you were over there, you two were both single at the, at the time mm -hmm. um, with your first visit. What was your impression of the British lads as opposed to the American guys? I have um, a lot to say about this. Lucy and I uh, did go out quite a bit back in the days, which was, it was always such a great time. Um, I think my, my step family knows that I just did pick up a lot of characteristics from the lads and would often use it as a, a good dinner conversation. <laughs> um, so we do have a similar group here. Um, I'm sure you guys have you guys know this, but we have our American bros, which would be the equivalent of the, the English lads. There are a few things that I think the lads have over the American bros, and that's just that they dress so nice. I mean, I like, you're, we're used to going out to bars here, and I'm sure you guys even noticed in the restaurants and things too. Um, sports attire, totally fine. <laughs> Cap and the train uh, sneakers and the yeah, couple shirts. absolutely, it's totally fine. Which can be good um, if you don't feel like getting dressed up. But I like that. I liked, you know, we were we would go there, and the lads were just really, you know, really dressed up. They always smelt very good. Like you knew when lads were nearby, you know, the, the cologne was coming, you know, and it was just they always had their the hair and everything. You could tell they just really take good care of themselves. And I actually have uh, a story for you guys um, at how I would sum up the lads in general. Throughout my research of the English lad, I, <laughs> I found that there is one word that can describe all of them and you will be quite surprised at what I'm about to say. That word is loyal. Loyal? Loyal. That's an interesting ah, I didn't word. expect that one. <laughs> yes. Yes. And although <laughs> I might not be referring to uh, loyal to their significant others <laughs> necessarily, because I know being a young lad, you have to you know, <laughs> get out there and enjoy yourself. I am referring to their mates. And the reason why is something that I witnessed, not in London, actually. It was when I was in Hamburg. My cousin and I traveled over there and we were in, it, it's going to sound bad, but it was actually a very trendy place to be. It wasn't so taboo over in Germany, but we were in the red light district, which also um, houses all of the cool restaurants and the bars and a great place to get a pizza. If you're ever looking for a pizza in Hamburg, <laughs> red light district. As you can imagine, it was quite a magnet for the, the lads and the bros, both. We, we saw quite a few and we <laughs> saw this group and there was one lad, I think it was a group of like four or five people and one of the lads, had a little bit too much to drink. I'm um, not even a little bit. I, I wouldn't even call him drunk. He was like way past that. He's he, it, it was drunk a long time ago, unfortunately. And and he was to the point where he wasn't just having trouble walking. Like he he looked full on asleep. And his lads, or his mates, excuse me, his mates, they could have easily put him in an Uber, sent him back to the hostel, and let the staff deal with him and put him back to bed. But no, they knew the party must go on with all of them. So <laughs> they carried him, like actually carried him down the street. And they were just talking amongst each other like the guy was awake. And we were looking at them like, this isn't real, is it? And we were just so surprised. I mean, it was just amazing. Oh, that's so funny. I will say this for the British in general, actually. We, we do look after our drunk. <laughs> we'll keep that up because that's a very good quality to have. Any plans in the future to go back to the UK? Yes, so I I really 
would love to bring my son over there. In fact, we were planning it um, before the travel bans and everything uh, that we would bring my son Teo over and we would go to London for a bit, but mostly spend time with my step grandparents and uh, step family. I would love for him to experience England and I love it so much. So I can't wait to go back. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jenny. This has been wonderful. We've really enjoyed talking to you yeah. and can't wait to see you on the channel more of course thank you guys so much for having me and i can't wait to come back for the next one. Oh, oh can't awesome. wait to have you so guys like subscribe comment below and um see you soon bye, bye.